Today we're going to be going over my profession builds for every single one of my professions in War Within along with what I actually intend to use them for providing that build and as such how I go about making gold at this moment in time. Let us begin. So first things first when it comes towards everything with my lovely herbalist and miner Corthana we can have a look at what she's actually got. Now, jumping in towards everything with herbalism, I am doing really well at the moment with herbalism. I'm pulling around about 40 to 50k per hour, depending on the zone and or materials. I've actually put 40 points currently into Bountiful Harvest, along with 10 points in each of the different types of herbs, and I'm currently maxing out the Arathor Spear one, which is Spear Scavenger. This is basically to increase the yield of the amount of materials that I'm actually gaining and as such that's why I've put a lot of points into this because I'm farming up a ton of materials at the moment making really good gold so therefore it makes sense to increase that yield of those materials in general. Moving over toward botany in herbalism we can see that I've put 40 points into botany as the baseline but not into the really the other ones. The Three in mulching is kind of a mistake, so just uh, bear with me on that one. But botany, definitely, I put this one in there mainly due in part that it increases my finesse with these points. And overall, when when I'm actually herbing out in the real world, that finesse really helps with increasing the amount of gold that I'm able to actually gain from all of that. Moving over towards the last spec for herbalism is overloading the underground. I actually put 40 points into overloading the underground, the baseline one. However, I haven't put any points into any of the subcategories as of yet, besides one, which is another mistake, as I have been playing around with this profession, just trying to maximize everything. So with the core ones, I've got 40 points in every core one, along with just maxing out all of these herbs, and it's really doing very well for a very simple build overall. As we go in towards mining, we will see that I've done similarly the same thing. With Plethora of Ore, with mining, I've put 50 points into Plethora of Ore to maximize the amount of deposits and what I've actually gained. And along with that, I've started putting more points into Bismuth to increase my yield of those materials. So bismuth is doing really well at the moment. It's just at 26 to 4 out of 45, and I'm currently maxing out that one besides iron claw ore and akirite because akirite and iron claw ore aren't really the big ticket sellers. It really is the common item, this expansion with bismuth, so I'm focusing more on maximizing that bismuth. But if we go in towards mining fundamentals, I maximize that with 60 points, and this is to improve my finesse once again, and I've definitely maxed that finesse right there. As per with the herbalism, I've put three points into rich deposits because it was just another thing that will be actually done, but I'm focusing more on plethora of ore as such to that effect, so I maximized those mining fundamentals. Jumping in towards Mastering the Mysterious, I've put nothing into this as of yet. I'm maximizing my plethora of all, like I just said, and my ones on this one. Mastering the Mysterious at this moment in time really doesn't do an awful lot for you. So I'm really putting that one on the back burner for mining. In regards to everything, when it comes towards my herbing and mining, I'm pulling around about 40 to 50k for a hour's worth of farming, which is really good at the moment, and I'm making the most of it by doing an hour's worth of farming every single day, and it is really, really doing well. So I'm just going to keep going until prices just collapse, or if they stay the same, I'll just keep that in my routine overall. Now, in regards towards leatherworking and skinning, I've done a few different types of things. So when it comes towards skinning overall, I've applied a couple of things to this and I have mainly been maxing out my tanning. Now I'm a little bit behind with when it comes towards skinning as it isn't that profitable at the moment. So I've been pushing more focus onto my herbing and mining. However, you can still make a decent amount of gold per hour. It's just that herbing and mining dual gatherer is just 
more viable at this moment in time. However, I will be trying to max out all those points because I am a little bit behind when it comes towards those knowledge point gains. But with skinning, tanning, I've maxed that out at 40 points to increase the yield of items. And I've placed to 28 points in Luxurious Leather at the moment. And I'm aiming to maximize this one and maximize the Chitin one as well. So these two will be maximized as fast as possible. Uh, but then we move over towards harvesting, which I've only got six points into that for a little bit of deafness. And with luring, I've done literally nothing. As you can tell, I am mainly going for the leather because the leather is really good at the moment. So that's what I'm really, really going for overall with all of that. So with skinning, a little bit behind at the moment, but I'm just aiming for maximizing the most amount of leather for farming and I'm gonna have to focus a little bit on that after I've redone a few other different types of bits and bobs. Jumping in towards everything when it comes towards leather working on the other hand, I've been a very busy bee when it comes towards crafting. Now I am a little bit behind with some of the knowledge points for this, however this will be easily done with the new catch up system which I was watching and researching on last week so I'll be having to focus on that for this week just trying to use the catch up mechanic. But jumping in towards all of this we've got luxurious leather, I've got 20 points into luxurious leather. I really do need to maximise this to 30 as the other two of the subcategories is shaped leather armor and the embroidered leather armor is maxed out at 30 of each to increase the items that I'm actually producing and then I've got four to five points in every single one of the different types of crafts like your kickers, your wristband, well your waistbands, your grasps, your leg wraps, armbands, mantles, hoods and tunics. As you can see I'm really going for trying to maximize overall the most um, the best quality items for leather working as I'm finding a lot of the starting gear and all the sub ones to that for War Within are selling incredibly well at the moment and it's a nice daily routine just to keep that restocked, keep that on the auction house and a nice flow is coming around with that. When it comes towards the next spec for this we have the learned leather worker. I really don't have anything into here however I will need to actually spec into this eventually so when I use those capture mechanics I will need to maximize learned leather worker as that increases my ingenuity and that will amazingly increase the quality of the items that I'm actually producing as well because ingenuity just works like that it works really well so I will be putting the next 30 points into learned leather worker when it comes towards your the chitin one the the concrete chitin I haven't put any points into that I've been focusing more on the leather items than the chitin and to be quite frank they're selling the best overall so I'm just focusing on what's actually working for myself and when it comes to flawless fortes I haven't put anything into this as of yet because I'm focusing more on ingenuity than anything and just trying to increase the quality of the items that I am producing in regards to enchanting, I've done a few little different types of things. I know a lot of people would be really into the shuffling at this moment in time, especially with enchanting and or alchemy with all of that. But however, I've gone with a different route for myself and it's working out quite nicely for just standard steady gold every day. With the majority of my professions, I'm making the most of my concentration and also just trying to produce the best quality items I can. And this is with Everlasting Enchantments. I've got 30 points into Everlasting Enchanting Enchantments as a whole. Then I've maximized the Earthen Enchantments because I found that those ones have been selling really well. So I was like, right, I'm going to get on top of this straight away. And now I've just maximized the Terrific Tools because I wanted to make sure that when people are like leveling up their professions people want to get the best bang for their buck and with their profession tools you're basically shelling, selling the shovels while they're digging for gold essentially so I've maximized this early on and 
that's why I've done it because then I was able to pull in lots of high gains with those profession tools just trying to maximize the best quality ones and sell those on the auction house and it's been really paying off over the last few days and or week or basically the expansion as a whole since release. And I've got a couple of little different types of ones into everything, which is bolt, bolstered breastplates and the wondrous weapons. I'm finding weapons are doing really well at this moment in time, so I've started placing more points into wondrous weapons to just try and increase the best amount for of quality items that I'm actually producing for those. If we go in towards everything else, I do have no points into supplementary shatter because I'm not focusing on shuffling with anything to that effect and we've got a few different things when it comes towards your designated disenchanter I do have five points in that and I do have ten points in the rare resourcing this was mainly due in part just to help me boost my leveling with enchanting early on and this isn't really part of my actual build but realistically I will be specking into this eventually but we're focusing mainly on this tree with everlasting enchantments just to try and get the best bang for my buck. Now I do have a couple of points into the into this lovely one with the ephemerals, enrichments and equipment. Now I haven't actually put many points into this, I've only put six points into the base one as I've been focusing of course on these different types of bits and bobs however like I said before I am a little bit behind when it comes towards knowledge points but we've got the catch up system which I'll have to get ahead of later on in the week but I'll probably hopefully be able to get that streaming again once I've managed to get my camera fixed as of as such now if we actually jump over towards our next profession which is tailoring I've done basically a thing of much like my leather working where I'm focusing on the leveling gear mainly and just trying to produce the best types of stuff there is a couple of things when it comes towards this with threads of devotion I've only got five points in that 25 points into weathering wear this is because weathering wear just works really well for producing higher quality items overall and I've got two points in hats cloaks and gloves now if we go over towards from dawn until dusk this was mainly for my leveling as I've got one point in uh, from dawn until dusk and 10 points into my dawn weave tailoring when it comes towards quality fabric however I've actually maximized this at 30 points overall and that was mainly due in part of my specific goal for this when it comes towards everything. I've done it a little bit backwards with tailoring, I must admit. However, it's still working. It's generating decent gold, so I can't complain. And then we've got textile treasures, where I've got seven points into that, where it should have really been five. However, my own mistakes, I'll own up to them. But I have put in 30 points into the perfect loop because it maximizes my ingenuity early on and that's what I did and it really paid off when it came towards crafting just base items for from people with fresh alts and I was able to early on manage to get a ton of gold just from the base ones so when the people were leveling their characters they were buying gear and when they actually managed to get to max level I had that gear ready for them to just buy off the auction house and I really didn't care about how cheap it is to craft and sell and everything the profit was there however it was the volume at the beginning that really paid off for me so what I'm really doing at the moment is I'm really specking into threads of devotion as I've mainly done all of the stuff on this at this moment in time so it's mainly putting all of the points into this now and trying to maximize all of that now when it comes towards my alchemist he is basically my bread and butter he does a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes towards my crafting as I use a lot of old world crafts as well still as they're fairly profitable all the time and it's just a really good steady income however when it comes towards war within as a that's the focus of the expansion. I do have a couple of things that I've actually done. Now, I haven't been focusing on this lovely thing, and I am not going to try and pronounce it, but you know what I'm talking about, because if you watched my alchemy build video, you know what type of build I'm gonna be talking about, because I plan on not using this lovely thing for transmutations, 
I've been focusing more on volume of items such as like uh, healing potions, flasks, pots, flasks and elixirs and just trying to get those ready for raid night and everything. Now when it comes towards your potent potions I currently am specking that out to max. This will be completed as soon as possible as this is the current one I'm working on with potent potions. I want this one at 30 points, we're currently at 20 and I want this one to be maximized at bulk production because I want to create as many potions for the same cost as possible to maximize gold. It's all about volume with alchemy and I've found that throughout expansions without following trends of like oh yeah this is doing really well at the moment or thing this one has just focusing on sh reducing the cost as much as possible and just producing a lot for the same price has just worked for me so i'm going to stick with what i know and what i am actually quite well adapted to and that is producing high amounts of things at a cheap cost so potent potions is just a no-brainer when it comes towards your fantastic flasks, I am fully maxed out on this lovely little thing, and that is uh, fantastic flasks are maximized at 30 out of 30. I have my profession files because I wanted early on to get on top of the true site file, and that really paid off. And that's at 25 out of 25, as well as a bulk production in fantastic flasks as well. And that was just to maximize everything early on for just m making the most amount of items for the same price and it really paid off early on and I was able to actually take all of that profit that I made and just put that into all of my professions so I really didn't have to invest any gold to level all or a lot of my professions up and get those, my other characters because I jumped on alchemy early on and I just started producing like a crazy man yeah and that just worked. When it comes towards my alchemy mastery, I haven't put any points into this as of yet. I have been looking into this. However, I'm mainly focusing on fantastic flasks and potent potions, maximizing these two trees right there for alchemy. In regards to my inscription, inscription, it has been really steady at the moment. For me personally, I will only state that. However, I have been putting points into the this one of the archival additions with archival additions i have been putting a few points into this and that is 10 out of 30 points is in the runic research just to unlock this and that was to get on top of vantis runes now i was a little bit behind when it when it came towards putting all my knowledge points into this however catch a mechanic later on this week i'll have to just spend a ton of gold not a problem easy enough to do and that is because when the first raid came out i wanted to make sure i was making the most amount of vantis runes for the best quality at a cheap price so i was just really trying to get on top of that uh, however alas my focus was elsewhere trying to just maximize other professions and inscription really suffered for me but we're jumping over towards everything we do have a couple of things and this is the careful carvings i haven't done anything really with this uh, but i will be specking into definitely the profession tools overall and uh, i'll have to look at this but the rolling pins is doing really well so i'll just apply those changes right there because i know those rolling pills are selling like hot cakes at the moment so i will be specking into that Mainly with this, I've been focusing more on my, with inscription, is the profession tools and just using my concentration every 100 hours just to try and maximize the best quality items of those profession tools because people are just buying them. And I'll be honest, I've been using the majority of my time with this scribe just trying to send the treaties off to my other characters just to try and level up their knowledge points as much as possible. When it comes towards Pursuit of Perfection, I haven't put any points into this as of yet. I'll have to look into this a little bit further, but realistically, I'm not really interested in improving my inks and everything as of yet. It will be something I will want to do because that will reduce the cost of production. However, I've been more focused on Pursuit of Knowledge, which is the main core build for me with Inscription. Pursuit of Knowledge, I've put 30 points into the Pursuit of Knowledge for resourcefulness, 
ingenuity and my multi-craft overall this was just a banger at the beginning of the expansion so i was able to just produce lots of stuff for a cheaper price and more stuff and just yeah it just worked and then i immediately put like 10 points into these you can see currently there i've got 15 points out of 30 in eureka with the same goes for multitasking and also 11 out of 30 points in detail orientated mainly this has been working really well at this moment in time and at the moment i really just want to maximize this entire tree of pursuit of knowledge because overall in a general sense it's just working and i just think and i know it's actually paying off in a really big way so i'm just going to keep doing that keep on top of my concentration uh crafting and it's just paying off just as in a general sense overall now we jump over towards my blacksmith this guy has been a very busy bee recently and no my build for this has not been focusing on alloys now i do will i will go on to say and i will say this i should have really gone on to alloys early on uh i know a couple of you guys from my uh from my discord we were talking about it early on you guys made a load of gold However, I made a load of gold with crafting items. But realistically, those alloys really paid off early on. And it's just, yeah, that was really good. But currently for me, I'm focusing on higher item items, mainly the same as my tailoring and leatherworking. I'm really focusing on trying to produce the best quality items for the best amount of price. And because that is steady gold throughout an expansion, because people are constantly leveling up their characters, they're constantly trying to upgrade their characters with gear once they get a fresh ult. And it's just something that's always in demand is those items. So I've really been focusing on getting this all sorted. So to start with, with armor smithing, I've got 15 out of 30 points in armor smithing as a whole. That really should be maxed to 30. But at the moment, I really wanted to get early on into my basic craft. That's why I've got 30 out of 30 in large plate armor. As I know, a lot of tanks were getting themselves ready for raid night. I really wanted to produce those items. And um, that's why I, I tried to maximize this as fast as possible. Uh, I then put a few points into all of the base ones. So breastplates, I've got 7 points. Uh, greaves, I've got in... in I've got 10 points, I've got shields, I've got 8 points, and then jumping over to the other sub-specialization, I've got sculpted armor, and I've put 6 points out of 30 into that. Mainly due in part that I should really maximize this tree before I move on to the other one, but I was just really, I'll be honest, I was just playing around with the profession, because realistically, I'd rather I make the mistake than some other people make the mistake before I do a guide on it, so I always like to do testing ahead of time. That being said, when it comes towards weaponsmithing, I really haven't put any points into this as of yet. I've been mainly focusing on the armor because you can produce a lot more armor than the weapons. It's just, in a general sense, armor with the more variety of slots on your character, you're going to sell more of those items. Granted, weaponsmithing can produce a higher yield, depending. However, at the moment, armor smithing is doing better than weaponsmithing for... The items that are crafted from these so I've been focusing more on the armor smithing new and my focus has been more on alts and more people just leveling their characters in general and and gearing them up fast in means of production I literally have one point I haven't really been focusing on any anything crazy like the alloys or anything no alloy build or anything so we'll just skip over that because I only put one point there it's kind of yeah, it's just not a point, no point to it. However, when it comes towards the uh, Ever Burning Forge, I put 40 points out of Ever Burning Forge. This was mainly just to increase the quality of my items overall early on. So while I was leveling, I was putting it into the Ever Burning Forge. And this one just improves my ingenuity, multi craft, and resourcefulness in general with my crafting. And at the end of the day it just worked early on when it comes towards just getting those items ready for alts and everything so that really paid off just putting my first 40 points into this and 
overall it really paid off and I managed to get a ton of gold from my basic crafting of my blacksmithing. Now jumping in towards everything when it comes towards my lovely last character which is my jewel crafter and engineer. This guy has been a busy boy because he's been make, helping design and upgrade the ultimate thing which I'll be talking about once it's all fully set up because it's taking ages but for war within with jewel crafting we can have a look at jewelry crafting seriously please get a better name <laughs> but overall early on I put in 40 points into this 40 out of 40 overall for just in general when I was leveling and it just worked off really well. I've put 20 out of 30 points in amulets, I'm aiming to maximize this. I've got 20 out of 30 points in rings and I've got 20, uh, 30 out of 30 for my profession accessories because early on profession accessories were selling like hotcakes. I jumped on that early on and I managed to make a ton of gold with that and I'm still actually making a, a fair amount of gold overall when it comes towards everything. And then we go in towards my lovely little bit of shaping. I haven't actually got gem cutting unlocked, uh, but with shaping I've got nothing in there because I wasn't focusing on prospecting. Ideally, you would, uh, if I had another dual crafter, I would have specced into gems because gems overall are selling pretty well for raid nights. But I really wanted to focus on the items that were being produced early on. Same thing when it came towards my blacksmithing, leatherworking, tailoring. I'm focusing on the, once you've got your alt and your characters to max level, people will just initially buy gear off the auction house and it is that baseline profession gear that you are crafting that people will just buy to get a head start. And it, that really paid off with the rings and the amulets as well as the profession tools when people were all leveling up their professions to make gold. I was selling their shuffles and they were buying them up so that really paid off. With gem cutting, obviously I haven't even unlocked this tree yet because dual crafting is one of the ones that I haven't really focused on overall. So realistically this one, I, I'll be honest, I've just neglected dual crafting as I haven't really thought much of it overall for this expansion. Then it comes towards engineering. Now engineering, obviously my engineering is quite low, however, with everything. I managed to unlock a ton of different types of crafts and they have been paying off really well when it comes towards everything. Pretty much most things are at a profit and I've been aiming for just concentration builds on the profession tools and everything. So in the specializations we've got the engineered equipment. I've got 40 out of 40 points into that and then I put 15 out of 20 points into the resourcefulness and for the calibrated chaos. I've got two out of 30 points in the braces and I've got two out of 30 points in the guns. When it comes towards my inventor's necessities, I've put 10 out of 20 points into that to increase my resourcefulness again. And then I've got nine out of 30 points, which is currently the one that I'm leveling, which is for the profession gear because the profession gear is obviously selling like hotcakes. If people want to buy all of the profession tools and everything for the profession gear, I will be happily to oblige with all of that and just maximizing my gold from them. When it comes towards devices, trees not unlocked because I don't care for it. I'll be honest with you. Some people do care, but at the end of the day, for me personally, don't care about it. And then we've got inventing, which is six out of 40 points, which is something that I would like to spec more into when I gain more knowledge points. But re realistically, I've just left it as that, and I've got my engineered equipment. However, one thing I must say that I did, uh, I did do the massive shuffle on the dis disassemble inventions, and I actually managed to get a hold of a load of different types of crafts when it comes towards everything and I actually managed to get a hold of the crowd pummeler. I still haven't crafted it yet because yeah it's got a first craft on it but the profit margins on this is crazy because it's like 1.8k to make. The sell rates at like 0.019. I can still make a decent gold even TSM saying it will be 300,000 gold profit. However the sell rate's pretty low obviously it's amount 
but the price to invest into this is ridiculous and uh, I don't I can't justify it at the moment for myself so I've been focusing mainly on my specialization just producing more of the gear side of things for this profession as that's what's been paying off for me overall so overall that's basically all of my builds for all of my professions with from my gathering all the way over towards my crafting what I've been mainly focusing on with each specific profession and as such that's how I make using it to make gold at this moment in time it's quite paying off rather well at the moment so I cannot complain in the slightest I would love to know your types of builds that you've got in the comment section or even in the discord if you want to have a discussion about it I know a lot of people are going into the shuffling builds at this moment in time and I am um, I must say my blacksmith does have an extra profession slot so I have been thinking about that for alchemy but we'll get round to that bridge once I've caught up with everything when it comes towards the new catch up mechanics and my new daily routine which I'm currently working on a nice build for that which takes into account multiple alts so you can just add more into that so stay tuned for that one that video will come out once everything is prepared and sorted out so I can explain it properly other than that have an awesome rest of your day if you want to get any and if you want to grab my TSM profile that is on the patreon as well overall have a lovely rest of your day and I shall see you in the next video which will be soon